Good morning guys, it's March 17th and I'm going to be back in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 but the verse of the day is 9 and the title of today is The Workers Ruling Passion So, we're the worker What's our ru ruling passion? You know So I've been really going back and forth with my King James Bible and then my New Living Translation Bible. Both Bibles were given to me. Every Bible I've ever gotten has been given to me. I got my New Living Transla Translation one when I graduated high school and it was a gift from my church. And that's the one I really read out of because it's, it's a really good flowing book. Um... It's easier to read, but the more I'm starting to read out of my King James, it's the words are a lot more different. They're a lot more different. So, I mean, even the titles and everything, it's going more with what my utmost for his highest daily devotions are about, the way they're worded. But I'm still going to use both here. But yesterday I read out a New Living Translation. Today I'm going to read out of my King James Version. This Bible is a Jimmy Swaggart Bible. And if you don't know who Jimmy Swaggart is, he started a ministry when he was younger. And he's in real deep study with a lot of theologians and, and people with degrees in study of the Bible. And You know, he tries to seek the truth and... He's a really good minister, and thank God for him. So, this is a Crossfire edition, the Expositor's Study Bible. But it's his version of it with a bunch of other professionals in the history of, uh, of the Bible. You know, they, they actually go in a study together, and they put they still use the same format of King James, but the only thing is... They turned it into a study Bible. So it's like a King James study Bible. So it, it was a really good gift I received from my my uh, grandma, my grandpa. And uh, I've been using it as well for my study. And it's going really well. Uh, but I like using both. But today I'm going to use my King James. And I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, because we're back to exactly where we are. But today's... Verse is the one before yesterday's, and also the title of today's a little different. So, let's see what we can get out of this. In new, the New Living Translation Bible, it talks about new bodies. That was the title of that. Well, in this one today, chapter 5 says in King James, it's with, with the Lord. But where I'm going to start is, it, it talks about labor, which the workers ruling passion which is our work is our labor so let's see what king james version has to say and we'll go more in depth with this wherefore we labor this is our ambitions our ambitions toward christ that whether present when it says that with christ or absent and we're still in this world we may be accepted of him we need to be approved by him which we will be if our faith is in Christ and the cross so that first verse there which is the verse of the day wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of him for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to he that he has done, whether it be good or bad. So this will take place in heaven and will probably transpire immediately before the second coming. This concerns our life lived for the Lord. Sins will not be judged here, but rather our motivation and faithfulness for sin was judged at Calvary. So, Verse 10 was yesterday's, verse 9 is today's, I'm going to continue on. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, 
We persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciousness. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that you may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance, and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for cause. So that's that's pretty much what the labor part of this, all in ver verses together here. And that's what Paul was writing to the Corinthians. What we do, we do before him seeking only to have his leading, guidance and direction and approval. If our message is acceptable to the Lord, it surely should be acceptable to believers. Shouldn't have we shouldn't have to to because they knew Paul. So for we commend not ourselves again unto you. We shouldn't have to because they knew Paul. That's what he's getting at here but give you occasion to glory on your behalf so to stand up for us so stand up you know who i am stand up this presents paul desiring no false praise from anyone but wanting true recognition he wants his recognition he wants to be seen because he's given his heart and he's he's been that image for him pertain to the idea that his detractors we're accusing him of being mentally unbalanced. This refers to being of sound mind and to be thought of such. Some said he was insane and some said he was too sober. <coughs> so... Sometimes God works in ways that it just doesn't make sense to other people. And people think they're they're people are insane. You know, look at Paul. I I think what he did, if I was back then, I think it'd be crazy too, especially if I didn't have God in my heart. I'd be trying to find excuses to not follow somebody. Or listen to somebody who's speaking mere truth because of what he's seen and experienced. He's glorified by that in him, in himself because he has that joy of the truth. So, and he he sees now. You know, some people aren't given that. So, I kind of see what the side he's coming from there. All right, I'm going to go to my most first highest. Wherefore we labor. It is arduous work to keep the master of ambition in front. It means holding oneself to the high ideal year in and year out. Not being ambitious to win souls or to establish churches or to have revivals, but being ambitious only to be accepted of Him. And we're talking about Christ right here. We're talking about our Father. We want to be accepted by Him. It's not to win anybody else over, but just our relationship with God one-on-one. -on -one. It is not lack of spiritual experience that leads to failure, but the lack of laboring to keep the ideal right. Once a week, at least take a stock before God and see whether you're keeping your life up to the standard He wishes. Paul is like a musician who does not need the approval of the audience if he can catch the look of approval from his master. Any ambition which is in the tiniest degree away from the central one of being approved unto God may end in our being castaways. Learn to discern where the ambition leads and you will see why it is so necessary to live facing the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says, Lest my body should make me take another line. I am constantly watching, so I may bring it into subjection and keep it under. 
It says that in 1 Corinthians 9.27. I'm going to read it one more time. Lest my body should make me take another line, I am constantly watching so that I may bring it into subjection and keep it under. So what I'm getting out of what Paul's saying, he's not going to read anything else unless it's for God's purpose. So everything he does, he wants to know it's for God. Like, he's to that point in his life, he wants to give that much to God and everything he does, and it has to be for his betterment. Not for his betterment, for the Lord's betterment. And that's the relationship he has to have with God to really prove that that's, that's that he's honoring the Lord and our Father. It's absolutely powerful. I have to learn to relate everything to the master ambition and to maintain it without any cessation. So no pausing here. No holding back. My worth to God is public. And is what I am in private. So where I see myself privately is publicly. And that's the way we all need to get because it's not that secret life no more. Is my master ambition to please him and be acceptable to him? Or is it something less? No matter how noble. We gotta set the standard guys. And it's not... It's not just outside in public. That's the problem with the world today. I know I've been there. I don't want to go back. You know, I'm. You're only gonna find me in the church, or. And only places God or God is at, and um, and work. So you know you got to make that decision in your life. Is this something that I I want to do? And I mean, when you make that decision, and you want to put this labor in, you got to do it. You know, I mean, it's all or all in. And I mean, I I I. I I have went it all in a few times, and then I lost sight because I have my own way of understanding. So God has blessed me with this walk I have today, and that's why I'm doing this. I just I just know now. It, it took a lot of loss and pain, and a lot of things had to happen for me to get to this point. But I just know now. I've already tried everything else. To, to my knowledge and my walk, but I I don't want to try anything else because I just know it's gonna go into failure because I'm not giving it all to God. So by giving it to, all to God, I'm living righteously in all that I do. I'm a slave to His righteousness. Right now, I want to be laborers to Him in all that I do. Even trying to get people to come to church and all that, I'm not worried about that. You know, we sometimes we get that in front of our purpose by serving God, and that's what this is talking about. Let's just focus on ourselves. And it's not selfish because we're giving it to God, and that's the relationship to God. Let Him decide our factor. It even says in Matthew six thirty three, if we seek the kingdom of God above all else, He will give us everything we need. So let that take into account here. We got things we got to give the Lord in our body, mind, and spirit. And He, if we do that, He'll give us everything we need. And we got to have that faith and strength and shown by our labor what we're doing for Him. And it will all take place right in front of us what needs to happen. So, And by what we do, talks about and being that example and that light, people will want to see that light and the truth eventually. People in their wicked ways don't want to see the truth. They don't want to know. So, talks about that in the Word as well. Anyways, you guys.
God bless you all. I hope you enjoyed this message. I'm so glad I got to read out of the King James Version today. Thankful for that. Um, either way, they're both great Bibles, guys. I, I love both of them. Definitely, you can find two different meanings by reading both. That's for sure. But if you got both of them, then you can put them together and it'll just make you a better learner of Christ and what we have today as believers in Scripture. So, yeah, the Bible might have been manipulated through history, and I know this argument is there, but the significance of Jesus' death on a calendar year, he died, and he's, he's acknowledged on that calendar year in B.C. and A.D., so, you know, I'm pretty sure that, pretty positive that this is the history of what's ha really happened. It's came to being, and, you know, it even says in the Word that this stuff would be passed down, and the Word is truth, and it's the light, and it's, and it's, it's the Word of everlasting life, and, you know, that's the kind of faith you got to have. And if it is manipulated and all this stuff and you're getting it outside of your mind and it's making you and it's giving you an excuse not to come to the word of God, I'm gonna tell you something. God is good in everything he does. You might not think that. You might be you might be on a, on your own learning curve. I'm telling you what, God's never failed me. He's only making me to be a better man for him today. And if he can do that with me, with what I'm doing, he, I'm sure he can do that with you and everybody else. Because he is God. He, is, he can do anything. He's, he brought us into being. He's been there forever. He's even sent his only begotten son just to die for you as a gift to save us from eternal uh, you know, condemnation. So you got to make that choice in your life. Somebody gives you a gift. Are you going to just spit in their face and say, get out of my face? I hope not. You're going to accept the gift and show gratitude and love back to them. And this is the way we can by giving him everything we got every single day. Giving him the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name I say that. God bless you all. I'm going to get off here. And um, I just hope you guys have a really good day. And you guys use your Holy Spirit. It's with you everywhere you go. You just send an act of it. So use your Holy Spirit to know what's right and wrong and stand on the righteousness, stand on that foundation. I'm here to encourage and uplift you every single day. That's why I'm here, to just keep standing strong even though you're weak at times. we got to go to the Word to get our cups full every day. And if we do that, we can be an overflowing cup. We can be that overflowing well. If not of bitter water, but of sweet water. Go into the where we talked about the woman at the well here. Jesus was at the well, talked to the Samaritan woman, told her that he could have sweet water. So I want to have that sweet water. I want to be that overflowing well that everybody can come and get a drink from me. And I want to be a tree like alongside a river or alongside a stream. And I'm always going to never thirst. So God bless you guys. You guys are thirsty. You need a drink, come and take a drink. And if you want to get more, you can dive into this word every single day. And there's nothing stopping you but yourself. And I want to pass it along to you. So take heed in that. And I'm telling you, it'll change your life if you do it every day. And you put God first in everything you do. Let's be labor or workers to Him. So the title of the day is The Worker's Ruling Passion. So if you're a worker and you work hard, what's your ruling passion? I hope it's God. Getting to Him every single day and everything you do, because if you if you're doing that, but and and on top of that, making your image righteous of Him and really understanding the image of God, then you're going to be blessed for it, because you're going to be blessing others with that image, and they they want to be that image of God with God and labor for Him as well. Rock on! I'll see you guys later. Have a blessed day. I'm out of here.